<laughs> so uh, Reveal Rail Yard just opened on February 4th. Uh, I think this is probably the third or fourth season now in a row. And for those of you that don't know, the rail yard actually also provides uh, free rental equipment with snowboards, boots, helmets on Thursdays from 4 to 9 and Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, and they also are going to be doing some free community events. You guys have probably been sailing sail weekends. Um, but there's going to be a rail jam coming up on the 25th. If you want to visit the park and listen to some cool music, see people who do some cool tricks and things. Um, and then City Council adopts the green building code. So after 18 months of working to develop a new building and fire code, the city has adopted the 2022 building and fire code and the 2022 Denver green code. These new codes will apply to new construction, remodels, and building renovation citywide. It provides pathways for the development for development projects to achieve greater energy performance and holistic sustainability. And this will go into effect on May 1st. And the Shared Streets program uh, through DADI uh, launched in 2021 and did some pilot work as well in 2020 or 2020 and then in 2021. Uh, these streets use short-term traffic calming methods to reduce uh, vehicle trips and speeds, which resulted in significant increase in people being able to walk and bike on these corridors. And based on success, uh, the Denver Shared Street Program is continuing. So part of Ruby Hill Park, for example, I think is actually part of that initiative on Denver Shared Streets. Um, the Daddy wants your feedback, like in other parts of the park or other pedestrian-only spaces and bike spaces, if you like the program. Um, and we can share that link as well. And that's due by March 3rd. And then the last one is about ABUs, which I know is like really important to some of the members of this community. Um, so accessory dwelling units, um, Denver has actually released a new draft of recommendations to make ED ADUs easier for residents to put up on their property. So it can be a source of additional income um, and also provide additional housing for residents. Uh, the recommendations won't rezone any properties to allow ADUs, but it will provide some flexibility in design and hopefully open up expansion of ADUs to other parts of the community. Public comment for this is due on February 24th. Real quick, Megan, too, there was also the dog park update that came in second sure. after that. From okay. the so then for those of you that don't know, we are going to also have a dog park in reveal. Uh, it's going to be around, I believe it is, Lapan, Arkansas. And we just want an update from District 7 on what's going on there. And so the project has now gone out to bid, being the city's looking for actual contractors to do the work now um, with a plan to do it. Um, and so once they assign a general contractor, hopefully construction will actually start this summer um, and then be complete by the fall, which is pretty exciting. It's one of the first, I think, dog parks in Southern Districts um, for the city and county member. So not that I'm an expert in District 7 updates, but if anyone have any questions, um, I'll try to repeat them in the microphone, people are in the room, and then people online will we'll see them as well. Just a comment that the um, links, the links that were uh, mentioned, if anyone would like them, we can also include them in notes and um, share them with follow-ups. So when we post this, we can also include links or get them directly to you because there's lots of good good opportunities for public comment. So I wanted to make sure people had access to that. I am working on getting them into the chat virtually. Okay. Thanks, Jackie, for your help. Um, and I think next on the agenda, uh, we're going to go through, you know, all of our cool neighborhood stuff and just wow you all. Great. Um, and there was a request from Adriana to put the links in the chat as well. Yep. I will get to that. I will Perfect. do that for sure. Um, and I can help work on that too. Um, okay. Next. Cool. Jackie, do you want to come up yeah. and talk about all the cool things and why we're introducing the school center for our meetings? Mm -hmm. Yes. So one of the biggest things that we've talked about as a leadership team is we want to make this more of a community and 
having exciting things to talk about while we're here. Not just the very important city updates, but also some other things that are a little bit more local to us. Um, we wanted to, one, open this up to if there's anything cool happening in the neighborhood, some fun presentations maybe later on tonight, or new artwork, or if there is anything in particular that we want to share. This is kind of what we're intending with this section. And this section in particular, Megan, do you mind being a clicker? Nope. Um, we wanted to talk about the wildlife. I know a couple of you will actually recognize the work of some of this individual. Our resident um, native wildlife photographer, he predominantly takes bird photos, but Steve Snaps Birds on Instagram is the person who has provided us with all of this wildlife and information and uh, imagery, but also wanted to mention these are some things that you could potentially see just even in your backyard um, and out your windows for those of us who get to work from home or on your commute or on your walks. And a couple of the things that we really wanted to identify is our in particular winter visitors right now. So our bird feeders are really bustling and happy right now, especially with the storm coming in. It's a great time to put out your bird seed and keep an eye out for your dark eyed juncos. These little guys are super cute. They're very small to medium sized birds, but they have a variety of different colors. They are rainbow colors, and you can usually identify them by their namesake, their dark eyes, but also their outer white tail feathers when they're glittering around when they're flying, usually in lower bushes than on the ground, but sometimes they go up high as well. So, yes, we do live in the city. Yes, we are an urban corridor, but we still have a ton of wildlife to keep your eye out for. So one of our gems in particular is the dark eye jumbo. And then the next gem to keep an eye out for are our superhero birds. These are some of my favorites. because They look like they have little superhero masks on. Yeah, we just watched Pink Man yesterday, so I'm on theme here. But um, one of the things to be aware of is we actually have two varieties of waxwings that are in the neighborhood currently. We have cedar waxwings pretty predominantly, which is this top one with the yellow belly. They're here every year. They're kind of our regular visitors. But this year, there has been a really big um, explosion of our bohemian waxwings which are these guys in the lower left-hand corner. And you can tell the difference between the two. The cedar waxwings have a yellow belly. The bohemian waxwings have a gray belly. And they also have a chestnut under their tails versus white under the tail. And you can see in this photo that they are actually about 15% bigger. So the bohemians are wanderers. They're usually in, up in the tundra, they're cold climate birds, but for whatever reason, Denver is having a big, big population of them this year. So just a couple days ago, we saw about 100 in one of our trees just while we were out walking our dogs. So we've been out for the last swings. They're also very fun. And then last them to identify is mad at me. Our, there we go. Oh, <laughs> another computer. Uh, just in general, all the wildlife we have. So again, yes, we are in our urban corridor. Yes, we're in the city, but we have some really, really cool wildlife. These foxes were, these photos were taken just this summer as we were out walking our dog right along the Sanderson Gulch. We've also seen beavers and lots of evidence of beavers. There's the muskrats, there's coyote, there's deer. There's so, so many other birds. Check out Steve Snacks Birds on Instagram if you want to see all of those. Um, or ask him questions. He loves answering bird questions as some in here can attest to. So those are the gems we have for the neighborhood for this month. But again, any other gems that anyone would like to recognize, again, artwork, wildlife you've seen, anything going on, if you have something for this section, please feel free to share that or next month, and we can have fun features. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Out for that guy, and Bohemian Waxes. Cool. Um, does anyone have any questions for Jackie? <laughs> I mean, so essentially, we're trying to do this because I think we're trying to pull today as an kind of like a good, a great sense of like place and really appreciating like some of the amazing features I think that we're, we get to enjoy living in this neighborhood versus in other ones. 
And then next. <laughs> cool. So we want to do an introduction for the neighborhood. I feel like we've been getting a lot more new folks tuning in. Um, so sorry for those of you, but this might be um, a repeat for sure. The next one. Okay. So we're in community ministry right now. Uh, for those of you that might not be aware, especially that are online, community ministry is actually a food bank in our own community um, that does a lot of amazing work. Uh, the community ministry is open. I think it is uh, four or five days a week. I'm trying to see. You might help me here. Um, it's open Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and Tuesdays from 1 to 4 and Wednesday evenings from 5.30 to 7. <laughs> I'm also going to jump in right here real quick and put a shout out for Joyce, who is attending another meeting upstairs right now, that they have seen an exponential increase in the people partaking in their services. Um, so you mentioned today that they typically would have about 30 families during the week, but they have 58 today. So um, they are in need of uh, any tomato products, so things like tomato sauce or preserves and concentrates or salsa and cereals. Also, there are some really, really cool fundraising events coming up. So keep an eye on our Facebook group, their social media. Um, if you have the ability to support monetarily, that's another opportunity too. So funding tomato products and cereal, if you have the ability to donate, that is one of the asks she mentioned right before the meeting tonight. Thank you for that. <laughs> All good. That's what we're here for, All right? There we go. Okay. And then Athmar Recreation Center, even though it's named Athmar Recreation Center, is actually in the Ruby Hill neighborhood, which is confusing as all heck to me, but that's okay. Um, it's located off of um, Mexico Avenue. So it's kind of in like the west side of the neighborhood, not far from here. Um, and this is, they actually have the My Denver programming so that there's like free programming for kids to have the My Denver card. If that's something that your family is interested in, here's a QR code that you could use to follow that link. And we can also post it later in the meeting in the chat. Um, they also have a multi purpose room, a pool with a slide, um, and also where you can do laps as well. Uh, gymnasium, a cardio room, a weight room, and then they also offer fitness classes as well, like Zumba and HIT. So just something good to keep in mind. And then we have lots, lots of different green spaces in our neighborhood. Like we were mentioning earlier, all the amazing wildlife that we have that kind of transitions throughout the year when we're trying to go out and enjoy our walks. These are some of the places that you can go. We have the Saracen Gulch, which extends way beyond our neighborhood as well, but from federal, pretty much all the way to the Platte River, you can follow the Saracen Gulch Trail. There's also the Platte River Trail, which is multi-trail for bike riding and things to you all the way downtown. Um, it goes down all the way down to Littleton as well. And then we have the La Lomita Park, uh, which was just, I think, revealed last year. It's actually in the college view portion of our neighborhood, um, but it's located off of Tejon and Asbury. So this is a place that's actually like help, meant to help prevent flooding in the neighborhood. They dealt a lot with expanding the park, walk, walking paths, and different things of that nature, and multi-use rec areas. Um, and then we also have the Sanderson Gulch Dog Park, like we mentioned, that will be coming soon. And then Ruby Hill Park, obviously, um, kind of the jewel of the neighborhood in a lot of ways, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. um, but this park is probably the third largest in the Denver Parks and Recreation System. Uh, has playgrounds, picnic pavilions, the Levitt Pavilion, which for those of you that might not know, provides a mandatory uh, 50 free concerts a season, in addition to some paid shows. So that's for the community to be able to access music. We also have the rail yard and some of the best sledding hills in Denver and the baseball and softball fields. And so this kind of goes into some of the additional details too around the rail yard, which has at least 10 rails and boxes to do cool tricks off of. Kids sledding down the hill. And then we also have the community garden. Sorry, go ahead, Jackie. And the rail yard is free. Oh, and the rail yard is free. <laughs> with free equipment rental. Um, and then we have the community garden, which I did forget to mention as well. That is in the Harbor Meal Park and in near one of the picnic pavilions and the playground, where you can meet neighbors, learn about gardening, um, free seed giveaways too for people who garden there. 
And it's a really great opportunity to kind of get your hands like in the soil in our community. And as I mentioned, the Love Pavilion, they're going to actually be starting up here soon. Um, Concord usually start in May. So Andy Thomas, who's been with Lovett since they've really been here, will be here probably next month or the month after his meeting. Start talking to us about the lineup. They've actually already started announcing some of the concerts that are coming. So it's worth tuning in and seeing if there's any live music that you're interested in. I think the last piece they want to emphasize here. So Friends of Lovett Pavilion, um, and the Levitt Neighborhood Advisory Board is an option. So start to think about like what are things that you really love within the neighborhood. Think about ways that you can potentially get involved. They'll kind of like light your heart on fire. Um, and it might be something that you really enjoy, but especially if this is a resource in the community that you care a lot about. And Levitt actually also did yoga in the lawn this summer. I think that will be coming back as well. That was every Saturday and that was free to people in the community. Cool. Okay. Now Ruby Hill neighbors. So we have our meetings once a month. Um, it's the third Tuesday of every month. This is a QR code where you could add it to your calendar. And we also are trying to do these Ruby Hill social club hours where once a month on the first Tuesday of every month, we're trying to provide an opportunity for neighbors to meet each other, be social and build community. Because we know not everyone necessarily wants to always go to a meeting. We also want to have fun with each other and with our neighbors. Another thing that will be coming up this summer um, is the Ruby Hill litter cleanups and community beautification projects. So in the past, we've done cleanups of Saracen Gulch, the park, uh, Dual Avenue, and our local elementary schools. And it's just a way to kind of keep those natural spaces clean so we can appreciate and utilize them, but so can uh, the wildlife that's around here as well. And we do have a cleanup that will be coming up on May 13th, which Steve will tell us more about at the next meeting. And then something that I think we want to grow on as well is we've done these Ruby Hill garden tours where you can actually go and see gardens of your neighbors and actually see their gardens at their house. So where you can like bike or walk or drive and kind of do that as a social thing in the summertime as well. And then we try to do some sort of a potluck or block party every summer where we try to celebrate some of the things we've been able to accomplish. It's a way to get the kids out. We usually have pinatas, games, and fun activities like that as well. And then most recently, uh, two weeks ago, we actually convened um, in conjunction with other neighborhoods in the district a District 7 uh, City Council Forum where all the different candidates came and they'd answer questions and that was actually recorded. So for those of you that missed that, we can make sure to share that link as well. But that's a resource where we're trying to make sure that you have access to the information you need for voting, for making your voice heard and things of that nature. Okay, I'm actually going to, I think, skip this for now. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have Aaron come up here. And we're gonna go through this brainstorm a bit together. Um, I know it's a small group in here. So those of you that are online be rowdy as well. But I think what we wanna do, even though we're just kind of getting started this year, is we wanna figure out what do you guys as community members want to see as part of the neighborhood, um, as we're trying to like make sure that we're serving your needs, building community um, and kind of get that going. So I'm gonna hand this off and we'll tag team it. Sure. Cool. All right. So, first question here is what is the purpose of Ruby Hill Neighbors? You know, what do you as a member um, or just as a community member um, get out of participating in Ruby Hill Neighbors? Um, we have a couple of kind of prompts here already. So, the leadership team met um, a couple of weeks ago and we started to uh, brainstorm on each of these questions. But we want to hear from you guys, you know, what you see as the purpose and then you know, later on, we'll be talking about what do you want to see um, throughout the neighborhood this year. So any ideas? Oh, it's a small group here. People online, please just feel free to unmute yourself. Um, if you have any thoughts as to what you think the purpose of Ruby Hill Neighbors is um, and what you see as the benefit. Totally. And this will help inform us sending out a survey that we're going to send out with the newsletter in the next week. And we kind of figured this could be a good opportunity to build on 
what that survey could look like, and then kind of revisit it at the March meeting as well. I see a hand over here. No. <laughs> we can read through what some of like the leaders kind of brought up um, for the folks that you guys elected um, as your board and kind of maybe use that as a jumping off point. So cultivating a sense of place and community, I think is a big thing. So I think Ruby Hill can sometimes be viewed as a place where we live here, but then we leave the neighborhood for work. We leave the neighborhood potentially for going out to eat and different things. So what would cultivate a better sense of place and community, I think, for folks? Um, being a voice for the neighborhood, I think, is probably one of the biggest things is we don't necessarily have a strong voice as individual, you know, citizens or residents of Denver. But by coming together as an RNO, we can say if we are for or against something um, or if we're concerned about something, right? So I think like one of the biggest things that the biggest success stories I think we've had recently was there were a lot of concerns about the phase three designs for Ruby Hill Park. And we were able to bring all those concerns together and elevate them within the city. And with our help and with Joel and Clark's office's help, we were able to get those plans significantly changed from where they were before. Any thoughts before we move on to the next question? Yeah. All right. Um, so our next question is, what do you want the benefits of membership to be? Um, we were trying to brainstorm on some cool new ideas that could, you know, foster greater membership. Because uh, right now, the, the main benefit of being a member is being able to vote when we take um, some of these straw polls, polls on uh, different issues and being able to, you know, really have that, um, your voice heard on that, uh, whatever the issue is. Um, you can also vote for leadership team, things like that. Um, but we want to have other benefits too. So we're trying to work with some businesses in the community, um, try and come up with some uh, potential sick benefits what are we calling them sick ass discounts sick ass discounts <laughs> with some uh businesses in the area maybe some um within ruby hills borders um, but also some surrounding areas as well um but yeah some other ideas here um uh, very similar to kind of the purpose but you know promoting your business um that's another thing and we have some people here that are going to share some ideas a little bit later on um uh, we're thinking about having the business spotlight as a potential opportunity in the future, where if you're um, a community member living in Ruby Hill and you have a business and you want to um, promote that, we could give you know five minutes or something to each business to uh, promote what they're what they're doing. We have one of our first sick ass discounts. If you want to hear about it, absolutely. So I think um, I cannot see for everyone online, but I know most people in the room. Uh, we discussed this, that those of you who are Ruby Hill members, um, do feed members that you will be able to receive $5 off any check of yoga, yoga class, which includes yoga and tasks. So our, um, our uh, honest team and partnership. So the honest team and partnership. But yeah, so <laughs> as you these feed members, that is our first one. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Jackie. Awesome. Thanks, Jackie. <laughs> so, I mean, for those of you guys that are here, is there any particular reasons that maybe haven't been captured so far as to why you want to join like Ruby Hill Neighbors or why you come to these meetings? Meet people? Yeah, meet neighbors. Totally. Totally. Discussing issues that we're concerned about and excited about is a really important one, I think. Um, yeah, go for it, Seth. Uh, get small level news and information. I don't yeah. remember the wrong from the station. No, that's a good point. So, like being able to get, you know, more localized news and information that you might not get just listening to the news uh, or online easily. That's another big one. Cool. Thank you guys. All right, next. So this is a big one and hopefully we'll 
foster some more brainstorming, but um, what do you want to achieve this year? What do you want to see happen within Ruby Hill, within your neighborhood? Um, again, these are just some ideas that we came up with, but if there's something not on this list that you are really passionate about um, and would love to see in Ruby Hill this year, um, we are trying to take this and run with it. There's also lots of opportunity for people to get involved in leadership roles, which I think we're going to talk about on the next slide. Um, but if there's something that you're really passionate about, a, a project, a cleanup, a, um, uh, what else do we have here? Yeah. I mean, garden tour, anything yeah. that you would want to help organize, um, we would welcome the assistance. Um, and yeah, it's just another opportunity to kind of take a leadership role within your community. Just so, so I mean, I think some of the things that we came up with this year. Um, so there's some neighborhood organizations within the city and county of Denver that are actually like registered nonprofits. And so things that come with that is being able to apply for grants, um, like AFMAR Active Living Coalition and the AFMAR RNO um, actually has like paid staff, which still blows my mind. I don't know if we'll ever want to get to that place, but that's the sort of thing that we potentially do is we're trying to make sure that we're connecting community to the resources here um, and some of those things. Um, we have one question in the oh, chat. Sweet. I want to hear the question in the chat. What is it? So Aaron B asks, is there an Athmore Park farmer's market? Yes. So that's something that we're kind of in early stages of exploring with the Athmar uh, leadership team is they're talking about doing more jointly with our two communities. So that's one of the things we're talking about is maybe instead of an Athmar only farmer's market, maybe it's a joint Ruby Hill and Athmar farmer's market maybe to be rebranded. <laughs> yeah. um, and then same thing with the Athmar Living Coalition, right? So they have a run club once a week. They have yoga in the park. They have Zumba. They have all sorts of sort of things going on. And so being able to kind of capitalize on that, on that as like a Southwest Denver neighborhood cooperative. That's a good question, Erin. And just for a little bit of background on that um, farmer's market, Erin. So it, in the past, it's been hosted at the Alfred Park Library. Um, there is going to be construction at the library this summer, which is why they're kind of looking for a new location. And we have a lot of great green spaces over in Ruby Hill. So that's kind of what spurred this um, potential partnership. And we're really excited about it. We'd love to work with them and, um, like Megan said, build more of kind of a Southwest Denver identity. Um, let me see what else we had on there. Um, a new RNL logo. So our Ruby Hill neighbors logo, I think, is hiding on another slide, but it's just red font right now. We actually changed our neighborhood boundaries to expand all the way down to Evans. And so the original logo was just a map of the neighborhood. Um, so because of that, we want to do something that's a little bit different, potentially a little bit more fun. Um, and so one of the things that we were talking about is also like thinking about other things that can kind of be characteristic of the community. So one of the things that a neighbor brought up to our attention was this idea of kind of like rogue guerrilla artwork, potentially. So we still don't have our like <laughs> No, it's okay. Um, people can see, Ken, grab my laptop. Um, so there's an artist, Dave Pendleton, in the neighborhood. He actually lives by Schmidt Elementary. So for those of you, don't need to unplug it. For those of you that <laughs> uh, ever drive south on Jewel Avenue, you can show on the back of my laptop pen. So that's the haiku robot. And people can see at the bottom of the slide on the Zoom meeting. And so that is something that Dave just kind of put up, like didn't talk to him about, didn't do anything. Um, but it was kind of a cool, beloved piece of artwork for our community. It desperately needs um, some cleanup. It's been graffitied and different things. But with the May cleanup, letter cleanup, we're talking about, well, let's, you know, rejuvenate that sign of Dave, but then maybe let's also do something else. Maybe some seed bombing, maybe getting other artists to do things in the community as something that could be kind of fun. Um, you know, similar to other parts of Denver where artwork is really common. Uh, try to see what else we got on here. Um, mobility, I know is a big thing for folks. So we just had a meeting with the climate office, for example, on how do we do some micro mobility projects potentially that really show the needs for better access to bikes and accessibility, um, but also walkability in the neighborhood. So thinking about, can we do some sort of like bike library checkout on Southwest Denver? 
how do we try to highlight the fact that we need better bike lanes, better sidewalks? You know, the sidewalks in Ruby Hill, most of them are only about 18 inches wide, maybe less. So those are just some ideas, but wanted to open it up to other groups too about, is there anything that you're like, man, I wish this, this was different, or this would be a fun project for us to do together. Um, and not saying that like, if you bring up your idea, you have to sign up to do it. <laughs> it's more just meant to be a brainstorm on what would be fun for the community to kind of work on together. Yes. No pressure. Things you want to see. We got, we like a lot of what's up there. So that's good. It's a good initial sign. <laughs> and we'll put some of this in the survey as well. Yeah. But I just want to make sure that we weren't necessarily missing anything. I think one of the things we realized too is that, you know, our leadership team and some of the different things isn't necessarily representative of the full neighborhood. So trying to think about ways to be more inclusive, such as being able to pay for translators for meetings was one of the things that we were talking about to make it more accessible. Oh, okay. Good idea in the chat from Aaron B. Cool. Um, community yard sale, good chance to get rid of your stuff. Community yard sale, good chance to get rid of your stuff. I love that. Yeah. Less stuff going in the trash. Yeah, just kidding. <laughs> and repurposing things and giving them a second line, which I love. Yeah, that's a great idea. Awesome. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. So Ooh. one of the other things or oh, oh go ahead. Sorry. We're getting we're getting going here. Or a clothing swap. Or a clothing swap. Organizing a clothing swap. Any others in the chat for people online? So I think one of the last things, I think it's the second to last thing we wanted to chat about was how do you guys want to hear from us? Um I was chatting with uh, Amy, who lives in our neighborhood. She was like, I'm terrible with email, I hate email. I'd love text updates. And I was like, that's sweet. Yeah, we could totally work on that. Or you get a text reminder, um, let's say for the happy hour that's coming up or for the meeting that's coming up or if there's a special event. Um, we also are working on our new website, which I'll let Aaron talk about a little bit, which we'll probably be able to preview next month. Um, but we also have like, we're gonna try to do more newsletters versus just like email blasts as well. So you guys can start getting some of that cute, like local news in your newsletter too. Um, one of our other thoughts, depending upon if we can actually get our logo redesigned, is maybe yard signs saying like meeting this Tuesday uh, or happy hour this Tuesday. And we have Facebook, but I feel like we're still missing some folks. So we just kind of want to throw it out there like, what are other avenues that we can be doing to try to communicate better? Yeah, go for it, Seth. I love to You'd love to put your yard sign in your yard. You're so cool, Seth. Thank you. Cool. So if anyone online has any thoughts on that too, um, I think we've just noticed that like Facebook too is kind of a somewhat of a dying platform. I know one of the reasons why I still have Facebook is just because of this right now, <laughs> I feel like sometimes. So just trying to get beyond that, I think is one of our main things. And the website will be a good tool too. Do you want to chat about that a little bit? Like as a sneak preview, what you're working on? <laughs> Sure. So we are working on building a new website. If you've been at all, if you've Googled Ruby Hill, you might come across our old website, um, which was fantastic. Um, we used to have uh, someone that managed that very well, and she was very skilled. It is beyond our skill set <laughs> to be able to upkeep. Um, so we're going for a simplified platform, um, moving to a Squarespace site. Um, but the idea and what um, will be included on there, so we'll have you know, all the information for our meetings, the monthly meetings, the social clubs, um, basically a whole event calendar that you can quickly look at and you know, get to the links if it's a virtual event um, or any of those other details. Um, we will have a bulletin board section for all of those kind of city updates that come through. Um, we get quite a few in our Ruby Hole email. Um, so getting those posted so that the whole community has access to those. Um, what else? Uh, information about the neighborhood. So a lot of the slides that Megan went through earlier were it's talking about the rail yard and the community garden, just having kind of a resource hub for the community um, to be able to access each of those um, really, really cool things that have, you know, that are happening in our neighborhood. I feel like they have a pretty um, unique neighborhood where there's just so much going on. 
Um, so just making sure people are aware of those things. Um, I think those are the main uh, elements of the new website and hopefully that will be ready for prime time by next month. Uh, we just need to get some things transferred over. Um, oh, and uh, past recordings of monthly meetings. So having kind of a central location for all of that information as well. So idea being that the website can store a lot of the information and then like newsletters, texts are kind of more the reminder mm -hmm. side of things. That's that's the vision, but if someone prefers something else, we would love to hear it. Oh. Ooh, Airbnb wrote, maybe a postcard blast with info for monthly meetings and social clubs with QR code or just date times. People could volunteer to live around their streets, et cetera, saving on postage. Mm -hmm. Love that. That's great. And has access to a discount printer or <laughs> yes, Jackie <laughs> said if anyone has information or um, a resource for a discount printer, okay. um, <laughs> or if you want to sponsor that, that would be wonderful. Not Erin. <laughs> yeah, no, not you. <laughs> In particular, Erin. Yeah. Um, yes, because I will say being a Pays doing member, you know, being a pays do member. What am I saying? Pays, dues, pays, paying, pays. dues paying member helps us kind of support some of these other initiatives to, you know, gain um, additional membership, you know, doing some signs and postcards because we do all take money. <laughs> um, so if you're interested in becoming a dues paying member, we have some information about that. Yeah, please. Yeah. That's, um... Like yeah. Like, what's the best um, with the survey in particular, or no? I think in general. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Okay, so question from the crowd. Um, what's the best way to communicate? I guess with the leadership team, if you have an idea, um, I would say the email is a great way to connect. Um, it's really easy. It's just rubyhillneighbors at gmail dot com. I think also grab us at a meeting like or, or now <laughs> or at happy or at social club, <laughs> you know, really anytime. Um, yeah. but if you want to put it, you know, in digital format, then yeah. it'll neighbors at gmail.com is our email. Um, yeah. And if there's anything that you think of after the meeting and totally. And I think like we just realized like with the pandemic that happened, right? Like we had this a lot of like growing momentum for the RNO. And then we had to go to fully virtual meetings. I think we lost some of that sense of community. So like now that we're coming back, now that we got this like full leadership team, like what the heck do we want to do? And kind of just um, reaffirming that this organization is yours, really. And so like, for example, we have chairs in our bylaws, which sounds really fancy, but really it's like, hey, I have a kick-ass cool idea for blank. You could be chair of whatever. So chair Steve Newell, Stephen Newell, for example, is the social club chair. And Steve's talking about doing like full moon viewing like at Ruby Hill Park and doing bowling nights, different things. And that's something he's really excited about. So it doesn't have to be a long-term commitment. Um, and it doesn't have to be anything like really formal. It could just be like, hey, I'm interested in this thing. And if you want to be called share, cool. And if not, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. There was a question yeah. about Godsman Elementary. And oh. I know if that's one of the schools that's going to close. And as of right now. So as of right now, there was a question about Godsman Elementary. As of right now, I was going to say, so I don't believe Godsman Elementary is potentially being closed. There's conversations about Schmidt. It is for sure. Okay. So Schmidt Elementary is closing. And we have no updates yet on what that's going to look like. If other schools will go into that space or anything. Um, so that's a good question. Oh, Jackie. <laughs> I work in educational finance on my nine to five. So I can tell you that Denver does have guaranteed transfers for their teachers. So anyone who is tenured, which is usually two or three years or more, they will be finding them other jobs. And it is in, it essentially the reason behind it, I believe, is a decrease in enrollment. So rather than um, spreading resources to them within the district, they're going to ensure that students have access to teachers and teachers have access to students. So as far as that space and what that facility is going to look like, that's what we don't have updates on. But I do know that our public school takes pretty good care of their employees and that those teachers who are being displaced and staff that are being displaced, they will then be given other jobs within the district. So I do know that. 
Great. Okay, cool. And I think we'll be wrapping up here. I think at this slide, maybe one more. We'll see. It'll be a surprise. Me too. Um, <laughs> ah, well, yeah, totally. So um, membership matters. Here's all the cool things that you can work on as a member. We talked about um, you know, supporting our bylaws and some of those changes. Um, supports like the purposes that we discussed. Um, also having a formalized voice, like yes, we support this park plan, no, we don't support this park plan, um, and other things like that within the community, and then funding those efforts and projects that we mentioned. Um, and these are QR codes to both the ways to pay us online. We also do accept checks and cash. I thank God don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> Talk to Jackie. Uh, and then I think we're just gonna do neighborhood spotlight next. Um hopefully. Can I just well, just mentioning how much it is to be a member. Sure. $10 a month. <laughs> yeah, or a, a year. A year. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes a year. <laughs> to be a member, it's a really clutch deal, especially with all these sick discounts that are coming your way. <laughs> also, cost is not prohibitive of $10 is genuinely something of concern. Just come chat with me. We definitely have a lot of cool volunteer opportunities, clean up, fun neighborhood things. So, $10 is the recommended membership dues, but if that is something that is difficult and you still want to become a member for all of those amazing things, just Thank you. Sweet community spotlight. So I think there's some folks interested in talking for a couple of minutes about their property uh, that they purchased and kind of their vision for it. But if anyone else has anything else they wanted to share, cool life updates. Ken, I know you had a sick ass like science class today. Could do a mini <laughs> lecture. It's all good. You guys want to come up here? Is that comfortable? Yeah. Uh -huh. No, this is great. And then the camera's right there. Yeah. And uh, the name of our company is RTP Group. And we are you can be my wife Susan will be at good work to be So it's kind of a training project we said it's important for us. We want to do this right. So I don't think they can see this. Here's what you everybody thought here. I'm really the community because there's so much love for this community that I see and so much. Uh, energy and it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this thing transpires into a new project. But uh, Greg's, Greg's been the one that's facilitated this project the most, so he's got a lot of details that he, he knows about. And I'd like to turn it over here for a bit of the details. Thank you, and uh, it's good to see some you know young younger people getting involved. And so I actually live in. Massachusetts right now. I grew up in Colorado, but I, uh, my wife and I are planning to move back out here. Um, one of the reasons being this project, uh, and just wanted to be near my parents. We have two little ones, so uh, being closer to my, uh, you know, my mom and dad is is going to be nice. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I didn't even know if Ruby Hill has so much to offer. You know, like the uh, the concert we talked about, the concert area that is pretty cool. And, uh, the social events when I move here, I'll definitely attend them. So, um, but uh, to jump into the, the project here, uh, are we looking over to, we have two options. Um, so this is, I'll just kind of explain it here. So there's a close up view here and a distant view. We tried to make it, you know, as, when you look at it, as simple as possible, but uh, this yellow line here is the zone or GNU 5. Uh, below the yellow line is the zone ERH 2.5. Uh, and for, for some reason, our, usually the zone lot line goes around the, the parcel lines. Um, we're not sure why, but the zone lot line goes down the bottom third of our of, of our parcel. So two thirds of the two thirds of the parcel, you know, from here to here is GNU 5. The bottom third is ERH 2.5. Um, so there's two different zones. In order to build anything on the lot, it has to be the same zone. Uh, so this red line is where the line, the 
the zone lot line with, where we're proposing it to, to move. Uh, let me show you some, some pictures of what it looks like before. Hey, we're going to be close up <laughs> so everyone online can see you. <laughs> there we go. So, Megan, uh, she went with us and her husband uh, met us on site uh, yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yesterday. Uh, we kind of walk through the site um, and uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of trash here um, and some of the, sorry, it's hard to, oh, sorry. Pictures. yeah, so you can see that, I mean, from what, it's, there's a lot of trash, yeah, just the people on the, you know, trash. <laughs> well, you guys are going to do a more formal. Yeah, we'll do a more formal one. Um, but thanks for letting us come here and just introduce ourselves a little bit. But uh, so we would, our idea is basically to clean this area up and to put a, it's a big ditch right now. He's a civil engineer, so he could probably talk more to that. But um, to continue a, a, a culvert that's already over here, to continue it and have the road be over the top of it. So people drive down, this is Navajo Street. So you'd be driving down Navajo, you take a left into the driveway and then you can pull into your to your uh, town home. And so that's, that's uh, this is with our land. We've been trying to talk to the neighbor to the south so they can be a little bit bigger of a project. Um, Cause you know, this is a pretty big culvert pipe and uh, it just it seems like it might make more sense. So this is the second option. If if we can get to an agreement with the neighbor to the south, you know, it'd be it'd be you know a larger project, um, which is what we're trying to get to. But at a minimum, uh, we we would like to try to proceed with just our lot. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it. I don't know if you guys. Do you want to add something to that or do you have any questions? What's the address? Uh, 1149 South Navajo Street. And what, uh, so what process, can you go through the zoning process? Or? Yeah, because, because our, our lot is 75 feet wide. Uh, 50 feet of it is one zone, 25 feet of it's another zone, but it's, it's one parcel. So we asked, we asked Denver why you know, like usually the zone lot line goes around the parcel, but for some reason it goes right down ours. So they said they don't know, maybe it was an oversight. They, they don't know why, but uh, in this case, in order to build anything, we have to rezone it to match mm -hmm. our 50 feet. And preliminarily, we, we've had a meeting with the city and they're supporting. Yeah, yeah. and that's that's what prompted us to, to meet with you guys is they said, get in contact with uh, Mr. Clark, get in contact with the neighborhood group. So we're here and going through the process, talking to you guys and learning learning along the way too. So how many units is that? This is eight, uh, this one's 16. So if we if we can come to an agreement with the, the Southern property owner, we could do 16 units, some two car garage, some one, the, the one if we don't would be eight units. What's the, what is GMU5 and ERH 2.5? What are those different zoning codes? GMU5 is mixed use. Um, G stands for general, MU stands for mixed juice, um, and then ERH 2.5. I don't know what, I'm not sure what ERH off the top of my head, but um, I think RH stands for row homes, okay. but they're both multifamily. Uh, uh, so if you, the, if you look at the distant view, it's surrounded by multifamily. Um, there's townhomes here, right right below it's town, it's all townhome, it's all multi, there's no, is there any single family homes? I don't, yeah, there's a couple across the street, but. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it fits within the neighborhood, and that, that was the city's original um, comments as well. Is it, it, they think it fit in the neighborhood too? But gotcha. right to the north of us is is apartments uh, that drive have their own garages, so they're pretty similar to townhomes. Just to the south of us is uh, another row of townhomes, so, so we'd be right between townhomes. There's new there was new construction just right like two two uh, parcels down that were just built. Not too long ago, there's a, there's a couple new constructions around there. So that area is, uh, I think, I don't know Ruby Hill as well. But I'd like to know, but I know this area well, and mm -hmm. this little zoned in area. And, and uh, yeah, there's, I think it's kind of up and coming or, or improving and things, you know. But when we go there, there's, 
if you ever have an opportunity, there's a ditch that's probably 10 feet tall, you know, something like eight feet. More like 15. Okay, 15 feet. Um, the big ditch. And uh, there's like mattresses and tires and some of those pictures they sent. And, um, you know, I've seen glass and broken bottles and things. So there's, it can definitely be improved there. So it's pretty polluted right now. Any other questions? Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, next, I guess we'll be back next month. Mm -hmm. we'll more formal. Yeah, totally. So probably what we'll do next month is we'll have these guys bring, you know, formal slides. And uh, then we'll decide as a community if we want to vote in support, you know, in opposition, stay neutral, something like this for their zoning purposes. Um, they're still pretty early in the zoning process, so I'm sure that they'll keep us posted as they get further along in their design plans as well. Thank you guys online for tuning in. Um, uh, I think we've answered all the questions, so thank you guys and have a good night.